All right, we're back into the world of Create Above and Beyond. This is episode two. If you missed episode one, I recommend you go ahead and check it out in the top right-hand corner of the screen. And also, if you enjoy the videos, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. But without holding back any further, let's jump into the video. So to begin, I figured it was worth noting that we have a couple different storage options for this mod pack. Uh, the very first one is that we have a bunch of barrels. Uh, and you can actually upgrade your barrels. So you go from a base barrel, which is of course just planks, slabs, to like a Tinker's Bronze barrel, which is just a barrel plus a single ingot of a Tinker's Bronze. And then it goes ahead and upgrades to 45 slots and then 54 and then 81. And then there's also a 72 slot one. Uh, so you can have upgraded barrels, which is pretty cool because in one block you can store a ton of items. There's also storage drawers, which holds a lot of items, but depending on what you pick, uh, only holds like, four different items, but a ton of it and things like that. So uh, I have a feeling we'll probably do a mix of these different things. So like cobblestone, probably in a storage drawer, but then like random items, probably in these barrels. Uh, but I figured it's worth noting. So if you see I'm starting up to appear up around here. Uh, that's where I'm getting that from. So I've also been looking through the advancements uh, because essentially there's a goal that we have for today, but uh, I've noticed some new ones. There's also a new version of the mod pack that just came out with a bunch of bug fixes. And I think they added two mods and removed two mods didn't change anything from the first episode so you guys should be still good if you follow that uh but there's some new advancements in here first one is the preparations one uh which is basically just saying like hey make these things before you begin uh awesome or like a cool thing is that i've made a majority of these besides the mixer and besides the saw uh so theoretically if i pick these guys up there you go there's the encased fan one and then if i pick the mechanical press one that should be the other one and now the other three that it's asking me to make is a wrench a saw and a mechanical mixer now uh i think it's interesting that they're having us do a mechanical mixer but now that i think about it that actually would kind of make sense so what we're probably going to do here is of course we have our millstone up we have a deployer up we have a mechanical press up and we have a washing station up uh we're going to make a wrench uh, 100%. It's like the tool for create mod, if you don't know. Uh, and then we're also going to um, try to set up an automated wood farm, at least. Uh, I think by the minimum, that needs to be done by the end of this episode. Uh, and then uh, mechanical mixer will probably set up as well, but it's going to be set up to a whole different power source because we're going to have to mess with the speed with small and large cog wheels to get that working. Uh, I'm kind of glad that I've picked an open space because I know that this is going to get pretty large pretty fast. What is that? Oh my, I'm kind of scared to go in there. Uh. I'm so terrified there's gonna be some trap in here. What is that? It's like a liquid. So this is like a laboratory. Um, it's by Chisel, um, that mod, which I don't really know Chisel, but I guess we'll, I guess we'll break these guys and just see a lightning charge. There's a lot of randomness that we found in here, uh, but create stuff is kind of, but there's a lot of create stuff that's kind of interactive with this stuff, uh, which is pretty cool because we're going to get some create stuff out of this. There we go. Now we got a wrench, which is perfect because we can now shift right click to pick things up. Uh, and then we can also, of course rotate things which is even better so i might be going insane right now <laughs> but they did they really just change the recipe to these kinetic mechanisms what the heck man <laughs> i i spent so long so long gathering all of these resources to make these things and now they're like half as cheap because I think it was like three cogwheels, two andesite alloys, a log and a saw to make one. And I, this hasn't changed, which I think. Yeah, so this is cheaper now than the sequenced assembly. That's interesting. All right, I guess we'll I guess we're going to start crafting these guys. This isn't actually that expensive. We can make we can make machines a lot easier now just by one recipe change. Uh. Man, all right, uh, let's let's see. There we go, mechanical mixer, which I didn't get the advancement for. It's kind of interesting. So I think that this is a bug because they've made it so. So all of these are click to view recipes, right? 
and it just detects it's in your inventory. This one I have to click to submit, and it deletes the mechanical mixer from your inventory. Uh, it submits it to the assignment. I don't think they meant to do that. I'm I'm probably gonna reach out and tell them that one. Um, because you know you have to make a new one again. Uh, but then we'll also make a mechanical saw for this achievement, and probably with that we can actually start making some automated processes, kinda. There's also been, I think, another change, uh, because I don't remember this being a thing. Uh, andesite casings are just andesite alloy and a log. That's it. Uh, which usually there are, I think, two logs, six planks, and two andesite alloys, so it's been made cheaper. Uh, at least, I think. I could be wrong. I'm playing so many mod packs at this point. There we go. Mechanical mixer, part two. <laughs> uh, which... This is going to be a little interesting because we actually need a gearbox and this might be a little too fast. So we'll we'll have to see. There we go. Perfect. So now we have a mixer up and running. And if I take my andesite alloys, I can make a basin. And now we can actually mix some things too, uh, which will help us a little bit in automating some crafting recipes. Semi-automating. Now, the last thing that they're definitely having us make is the mechanical saw. And that's because you can use the mechanical saw to uh, convert things like planks to slabs and things like that, but you can also uh, take a log, turn it to a stripped log, and then if you take your stripped logs, it turns into six planks. Uh, so you're actually doubling, doubling? I think doubling uh, your plank output, or just about doubling, uh, I think it's like one and a half. Uh, so that's the reason that they're definitely saying to make a saw. So maybe we'll make one really quick just for our machine. And then from there, we'll actually go ahead and make like a wood farm that will do all of the other odds and ends that we need. I have to say, I feel like I'm actually accomplishing things this episode just from those small recipe changes. I'm able to like go a lot faster. Uh, granted, still getting ores is a little bit iffy, but I have been more generous with mining and just been going out and mining like and grabbing everything now uh, because I am the only one in this world. So it doesn't really matter if I clean an area out of ores, like I can just go down somewhere else and just grab more, so. There we go, mechanical saw. Now, if we hook this guy up, it looks like we're actually good. Uh, so if I throw a log onto here, you'll see it'll go ahead and cut once, uh, turn into a stripped log, and then... Good, I don't have any planks in my inventory. We go ahead and cut it again, and it should turn into six planks. So we got a way of actually kind of automating our plank output. And because of that, we get three crafting blueprints. Perfect. Uh, which we ended up accomplishing something else as well. Oh, big plans, because it's asking us to make blueprints, so because of that, we get a painting. Look at that. <laughs> We're getting upgraded and completing more and more achievements now. Cool. And then uh, with these blueprints, we'll probably use them in a bit. Uh, we can basically set up crafting recipes so that when we click on it, it'll just take the items from our inventory and craft, uh, which I might end up making one for like andesite machines or at least for a kinetic mechanism, just because they're stupidly annoying to craft. Uh, but yes. All right, so now that we've accomplished that, our next thing that we really should do is get an automatic forest up and running. Or of course, an automatic log farm. Uh, which what they want us to do is automate cutting down logs, turning it to strip logs, turning it to planks, which is literally what I just showed you guys do there, but automated. Uh, and then turn it into uh, slabs, and then the slabs go into, uh, into our kinetic mechanisms, I guess. Which, that is for this sequenced assembly recipe, which is what they're hoping us or hoping for us to use because that's where we're getting our slabs. Our slabs would then be going across our depots and turning into our connected mechanisms so that it's automated. Now, theoretically, um, we could skip half of those steps and go into this route um, and use a saw and stuff like that inside of a mixer uh, because I believe it's also not consumed inside of this process. I take it back. This is where it goes different. Okay, so this is not consumed inside of the assembly process, which is the sequenced assembly process. And this, it would eventually break, so we would then have to automate saws as well. That is where sequenced assembly comes into play. Okay, so that makes sense. So from that, we need to just focus on getting logs up and running, and then we can see if we'll accomplish any of these other ones this episode. I'm hoping to honestly get this whole thing done by the end of the episode, but I don't want to be too ambiguous. Uh, but let's go ahead and work on logs first. <laughs> That's kind of cool. So we just got buddy beans from harvesting our crops. And if we take buddy beans and we use them in a cooking pot, we can actually cook these uh, and make a new buddy card pack, essentially. Uh, which I was able to do some research. Um, buddy cards? Uh, let's see if I can get it to pop up. 
All right, so a lot has happened, a lot of a lot of research to say the least. So all of these are buddy cards, and basically I've taken our buddy packs that we've found, right click, they open up and give us four cards around each. Uh, and there are different rarities to each one, and you can look at the corners of the card to figure out what type of rarity there is. And then there's also like shiny ones, as you can see this one's shiny, as opposed to a non-shiny one. So the rarest ones are the ones that have pink text, uh, and those have pink and yellow corners, then there's the blue ones, uh, then there is the yellow ones, and then, whoops, I picked one up. Uh, then there is also just the straight up the white cards, like the white named cards. The way this works is that, for from what I understand, for each set, there are 27 cards that you can collect. Uh, and the very basic set, which is what we've been opening, is uh, found inside of like villages, uh, from killing zombies, zombie villagers, things like that. Uh, and then once you get all 27 cards, shiny and not shiny, uh, you can get a medal, and the medal, when you equip it, gives you a permanent speed 1 boost. That's pretty sick, because all this is is from just looting, and we go ahead and get these, and we already have a pretty large amount of cards. Granted, a lot of these are duplicates. Uh, that being said, there's also some other uh, sets in here. There's another set, an end set, a create set, an aquaculture set, and a farmer's delight set. Uh, and all of these give their own little boost once you collect an entire set. Um, a cool one is the create set, because you get it from throwing cards inside of crushing wheels, and then it will turn into different crushed variants. And if you go ahead and get this metal, it gives you haste one permanently, which is pretty sick as well. Uh, there's also, uh, I believe, uh, aquaculture gives you a luck one. I think farmer's delight gives you nourished one, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and then, like, the end set is, I think, resistance one, and the nether set is oh another set's resistance one and the end set is also resistance one okay well that works uh but it's pretty cool because there is uh curious in here or how do you pronounce this i don't know um where you could just put this in here you're not taking up an armor slot or anything like that and now you just get a permanent effect all right so i have an idea and i think we can pull this off so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna build a probably smaller version of the wood farm that i usually run with in base create mod and we can pull it off because all it really needs is andesite and iron, or like the two key things. And normally you would need brass already, but they've added in the portable storage interface, but it's an andesite version. And all it is is taking an andesite machine and putting it in a stone cutter, or uh, I think maybe using a saw. I guess that also works. Uh, but still, I don't, I don't think it gives you all of these items. I think it gives you a random version of this. So we won't try that out. But the stone cutting we can easily do, and that gives us our portable storage interfaces. And then from there, we could technically make andesite funnels, which andesite funnels are the same thing, just andesite machine put into a stone cutter, boom, andesite funnels. And from there, we can go ahead and pull these items onto saws, run them through all the saws until it all the way gets to slabs, and that won't really be that expensive. So that is our goal for this first part of this episode. All right, so we're doing pretty good uh, that we have something that's going to rotate, which I'll show off in a second. But I know a lot of people are going to go, Rocket, how are you going to get a slime ball? And probably create veterans know this. You take uh, wheat and just throw it into a millstone. We'll let this crush up. And that turns to wheat flour, sometimes some extra seeds as well. Then we're going to throw this into our water right here. And this turns into dough. And then all we need now is actually a piece of lime dye, which we can get from cactus to get green dye and white dye or sea pickles if we go ahead and smelt those. Uh, and there's a bunch of other odds and ends that will give us lime green dye. So if we get lime green dye right now, we can actually just make some slime. So just like these, these uh, red tulips and these pink tulips, we can actually crush and it gives us a chance at getting green dye. So we'll just grab a bunch of these guys and we should be good. There we go, single piece of lime dye and we didn't even have to use the pink tulips. So now if we grab this, grab our dough, and boom, we got a slime ball, which is gonna allow us to glue our contraption together. So this is a radial chassis stacked on top of a mechanical bearing, which then has an encased fan that's just facing downwards to our magma block that is right below that. Uh, and then once you flick on that lever, we can go ahead and right click slime on one side. We're just gonna place out planks probably say four out for now, and we'll turn this number down to four, which you can see with a wrench on top. Right click the bearing, and we can see we now have a machine that's gonna spin around in a circle. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna place a couple saws on the front of this, and then we're gonna place a portable storage interface facing outwards, as well as some chests on the back of this. 
uh, and then theoretically that should be okay. Now I won't have it auto planting just yet because that will get into a whole bunch of craziness between uh, needing to have deployers and things like that. And I don't think we need to get that nuts. And this will give me a way of kind of controlling the output of everything. All right, the moment of truth. So, whoops, <laughs> already screwed up. All right, the moment of truth. So if we take our chest, just like so, place it like this, place a portable storage interface. I kind of like the look of this one facing outward. Uh, and then theoretically, we place some saws like this. There we go, it should start to spin around. Now, uh, I'm also gonna fill this in with dirt, try not to step into the saws, and just place down some saplings here. So this should now, when the saplings grow, it should go ahead and cut down our trees for us. Now, I just have to see, I think it's right here is where the portable storage interface faces. Okay, perfect. So it does face right to this block. So we're gonna go one block out and place another portable storage interface so that it connects. And then theoretically, if I take an andesite funnel and place that down and then we're going to do three different saws like this boom 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 this should now go ahead and be thrown through the machine here so uh one thing that we are going to have to do is we're going to have to power our saws right here because it's going to take our logs out turn to planks uh turn to or excuse me turn to stripped logs to planks and then here we're going to have to set a filter so that it turns to slabs and then uh, we'll probably use an andesite funnel to then place it into like a chest for the time being. All right. Theoretically, this should work now. Um, we just need this to actually grow, <laughs> grow a tree for us, which might take a moment. And then I believe that this should all work because you can see that we have all of our cogwheels are spinning in the correct direction. Uh, so... Yeah, this should work. Uh, we just need to actually set a slab. I've already forgotten. All right, cool. So we've set the filter at the very end to be a slab, and this should work now. So I guess we'll just wait for a sapling to grow, uh, and we'll see if it works. There we go. Now it should go ahead and cut the tree down, just like so. And now the logs and anything that's collected should be stored. Oh, I just realized we screwed up on something because it can also give us apples and some other odds and ends. Oh, and our <laughs> and and our logs just completely went the wrong direction too. You see, that would be an issue as well. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, then theoretically, it should be like this. There we go. We're seeing now logs turn to planks, planks turn into slabs, and then it should be outputted into into there. Perfect. Now, uh, one thing that we definitely did not account for is if it gives us apples or if it gives us sticks or if it gives us saplings something that i have noticed though is that we might be able to get by with this until we get out of the brass age it's kind of already it looks like filtering itself it's only giving it logs um and it's actually holding on to the sticks and the saplings automatically for us so i think for the time being we might be able to get around this and just not filter this out until we get into the brass age but because of that, we now technically have unlimited logs. Right now, we're just making a ton of slabs. So in a moment, I'm probably going to shut this off. Um, actually, I'll do it now because we don't we don't need like 100 slabs. Uh, but we can go ahead and clear our advancements now, or our quests, excuse me, by going into high aspirations. Um, we have done our any wooden log, so we can complete that. We have done our stripped log, we've done our planks, and we have done our slabs, uh, which... We actually need to pick up slab to complete that one. Just like so. And now that one's been completed. And now we have completed the entire automated wood section of this. Now, these next couple of advancements are a little bit more advanced. Um, so the first one is we have Bedrock's Bounty, uh, which says gathering andesite manually takes time. Thankfully, Bedrock can cause uh, lava to form andesite infinitely. At this time, it's best to set up drills to break generated blocks between lava and water. Since bedrock is blocking the space beneath, uh, you'll have to find a way to collect the drops from other sides. So it sounds like if we make a cobblestone generator, but with bedrock beneath it, it will generate andesite uh, cobblestone maybe for us. And then from our andesite cobblestone, uh, we can, of course, make andesite things along those lines. Now, that being said, we would then need to, of course, which it tells us here, uh, find a way to bring our andesite from the bottom all the way up to the top. Now, um, I'm confused because it's showing us a rope pulley. 
I don't know rope pulleys are being able... I guess rope pulleys could transport via chests on a, on a thing. So you make like an elevator that's just going to constantly go up and down and transport items that way. Um, another thing is just a ton of chutes and an and encase fan, uh, which I, I think would be a lot cheaper. I mean, less cool, but a lot cheaper. Uh, but we might, we might hold off on this Bedrock's bounty maybe into the next episode. Maybe. But uh, to, get, to get to the next thing uh, is automating sand, which says a good way to do that is with strainers, which I didn't realize strainers were even in this game. Probably should have checked that. Uh, which we can probably, it's probably a sediment strainer, if I had to guess. Oh, yes. All right. So if we use the strainer, it gives us 300 uses, and it's either giving us sand, white sand, orange sand, play balls. Uh, which that kind of works for us. There's also ways you could just generate sand via a ton of crushing wheels, which is just cobblestone in a crushing wheel. Next crushing wheel turns gravel into sand. You could also do that, but uh, a little bit more expensive than uh, a strainer. So yeah, this entire, basically all three of these steps is to get the andesite alloy that we need. Um, so this is, this is going to be kind of advanced. So we need to basically make a automated kelp farm, an automated sand farm that turns to clay. The clay plus the uh, kelp turns into the al or the algae al algae. Oh, my God. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and turn it into the algae bricks, and then we can turn it into andesite with our cobblestone, and then that's how we get into our deployers for automated, um, automated andesite machines, essentially. Uh, All right, I think we I think we got it to work. Now I don't know efficiency wise if this is the most efficient. I have a feeling it's probably not. Um, all I've done is take a strainer base, throw in the strainer inside, and then on top put a water source block. Have a feeling probably not the most uh, efficient. So <laughs> let me know in the comments on that one. But this should theoretically now generate sand and a bunch of other odds and ends. Uh, only thing is is that technically this would run out at a certain point. Well, speaking of sand. Uh, so out of three, out of 300 uses, it'll just run out. Um, we would then have to automate like canvas and things like that, which I, I don't think is reasonable. I think this is a good way to make it so our system stops running if we ever get about it. Uh, so this might be the one area where I don't automate that side of things. Now, that being said, now that we have an automated side of sand, we can work with this to turn it into clay. So we might as well grab this piece of sand. Um, and then we can check this off. And our next step is it says with the help of encased fans, sand can be refined into clay, which uh, is basically a washing system, if I have to guess. So literally what we did here, we just need to translate over to here and we just need to wash our sand. All right, so this has been set up here um, where we have our sediments that are gonna be generating sand for us. And I believe that every type of sand can actually turn into clay for us. So that won't really matter. We won't have to filter out the different sands. Um, and you can see it auto places on this depot. We have an encased fan through water going here. And I've decided because every time we build a section of this machine, we immediately need a power source that I think I'm gonna hold off from getting this up and running and actually just continuing to build the rest of this machine and at the very end getting a power source to just power it all. It would make it a lot cleaner, a lot easier to develop, uh, and I think overall just makes more sense. Uh, but because we now are able to do clay, um, we can go ahead and check that, that off because theoretically that'll turn into clay. And the next section is that uh, we would technically need to mix our clay and we will need to also have our underwater garden up and running. So uh, let's go ahead and check this out really quick. There we go. So if we look at our algae, uh, of course we can craft it, but we can also mix clay balls and kelp together to actually just turn into algae blend. So that means that here we will need a mixer up and running um, and theoretically it would need to be transported into the mixer. Now there is something that I have been avoiding and I think a lot of you guys are going to realize this and that is our mechanical belts here because our mechanical belts need cured rubber and then cured rubber is essentially just rubber regular rubber smelted or bulk blasted or smelted inside of an induction smelter um that's the gist of how you get it and then rubber uh can be generated from vines and water inside of a compactor or tulips and water inside of a compactor or resin inside of a compactor now theoretically the only way we can actually automate this process is resin and resin is given from um, 
the arboreal extractor using thermal series to extract it from trees or item draining from resin buckets and resin buckets uh, can just be buckets dumped into a spout casting tables or fluid encapsulators which is all just taking a bucket of that ingredient so that doesn't really help us so essentially we need to make trees that are going to generate resin and then pull the resin and use that resin to make belts that's a whole other process that is just insanity to just make mechanical belts. But of course, that would then allow us to transport items. So I've been trying to do a majority of these machines without mechanical belts because I just don't feel like tackling that process at this moment. Uh, but I have a feeling we're going to run into that by the time that we need to complete this whole machine. I've also just noticed that depending on the way that we set up our machine, I think we need to get into the Brass Age because right here, if we want to wash sand, we can't wash sand and then not pick it up right away because if i place like an andesite funnel off the side it will immediately constantly pull these items um as you can see just like so and that's not what we want we of course want to oh well, that did not help my situation <laughs> um we of course want to wait until it turns to clay and then we want to pull it off and the only way to filter that to my knowledge is through a brass funnel um meaning that we would need to get into the brass age which is not what i thought which is not what I think that they meant to make us do. Um, so we might actually have to go ahead and make some brass, which uh, kind of the easiest way to do that is zinc and copper, either in an induction smelter or actually only in an induction smelter. There is no superheated mixer in this um, or just like mixing it. So uh, that will be a whole other thing to filter this out, but at least we can try to get our basic machines up and running and we'll see what we need to do for our next episode. So speaking of machines... That means that our next thing that we're going to do is make a kelp farm, uh, which shouldn't be that hard. It's going to involve basically the exact same process as this, except we're going to need harvesters and we're going to need kelp and we're going to need basically like a container filled with water. All right, cool. So we actually have a kelp farm now up and running, which I can show you if I go ahead and right click and grow one of these guys too high tall, it'll actually go ahead and harvest. Um, or I guess, <laughs> I guess not the ones that are against the machine, but you can see that one works right there. Then it will place it right into this portable storage interface, as you can see, connecting through the block. And then all we would need to do now is output it from this portable storage interface, send it over to where we'd have a theoretical mixer, um, throw our, uh, our clay and our yeah our clay and our kelp together and then it should mix into the algal blend and then from the algal blend we can actually go ahead and start um to smelt our algal bricks and then from our algal bricks we could then mix in with our cobblestone that we're hopefully going to do or our andesite cobblestone that we're hopefully going to do in the next episode and that should turn into andesite um which man that is going to be a lot uh, but for the time being, we can go ahead and say that we've automated our kelp and get that finished. So I think that's going to be it. I think I'm going to end the episode here. I know that we've basically accomplished like half of our automation of that first column that we're in. Uh, but I've decided that I think that splitting this video up into probably like two parts would be a good idea. So the next part should be coming out early next week. So definitely feel free to go and check it out. Um, if you've come here a couple weeks later video is probably already out so you can go check it out but uh i just want to say thank you guys so much for watching the video hope you guys enjoyed make sure to drop a like and i will see you guys all in the next one